All right, we're going to be coming out of the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, starting at verse 26. Right there. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs and slew thy prophets which testified against them to turn them to thee and they wrought great provocations. Therefore thou deliveredest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them and in the time of their trouble when they cried unto thee thou heardest them from heaven. According to thy manifold mercies thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest they did evil again before thee. Therefore left you them in the hand of their enemies, so that they had to the dominion over them. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven many times. See that? Many times did thou deliver them according to thy mercies, and testified against them that thou might bring them again unto thy law. Which is the whole reason why we go through what we go through as black folk. The Most High Yah trying to bring us back to His law. Yet they dealt proudly. They wasn't humble. They dealt proudly. And hearkened not unto thy commandments. But sinned against thy judgments. So the pride comes. And when the pride comes, then there's the disobedience of the commandments. Okay? So, and uh, you read on, you're going to see how this happened uh, many years. This happened over and over and over again. So, yeah, there were many times where there was 400-year prophecies where the people had a chance to get it right, but they didn't. So they was enslaved or punished again. But right now I'm in the uh, book of Esther. It's pretty good read because the story kind of goes in line with what I've been talking about and what's really been been on my heart here lately, and that's being humble. And we are in Esther chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew, or Yahoo, whose name was Mordecai. I know y'all know the story about Mordecai. But anyway, Mordecai was a fourth generation Hebrew. Because Mordecai, the son of Jair, that's a generation. The son of Shimei, that's a generation. The son of Kish. So you go from Kish, that's one generation. Two, three, and then four. Mordecai is a fourth generation Hebrew. Now, in his generation, guess what happened? They had an enemy that rose up against them and was going to kill all of them. They was all going to die. Whether it be hanging, lynching, concentration camp, whatever you want to call it, they was all, they was going to kill them all. All you got to do is read the story. And this is actually lining up with historical data that you can look up about King Ahasuerus. Uh, what is that, 486 B.C.? Yeah, King Ahasuerus, or Ahasuerus, if I'm saying it right, uh, 486 B.C., you can look that up, okay? So, we're dealing with uh, the book of Esther now, but uh, that was, uh, I was dealing with chapter 2 and verse 5, and as you can see, uh, look at this, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity of which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah. So, 400, 400, fourth generation or 400 years and boom, captivity again. See? This is a, a, this is a known pattern throughout scripture. Uh, the four, Morde, Mordecai's fourth generation Hebrew and just so happened in the fourth generation they're going to captivity again. Okay? So, now it, it starts talking about uh, Shushan the palace. Uh, talking about Esther who was brought to the king's house. Okay, and, and different things like that. Now we're going to go to, uh, we'll go to chapter 3, verse 8. We'll go there. 
chapter 3, verse 8, down here at the bottom. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, where am I at? There's a certain people. See that? Talking about our, our people right there. There's a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the providences of thy kingdom because we was in a strange land. And remember the prophecy? It said, uh, your people are going to be servants and they're going to be strangers in a land that is not theirs and they shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. That's, that's happened a bunch of times. So here we are in, in the providence of, of their kingdom. It says, their laws are different from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. See that? And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have cha the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasures. So you got the enemy of the Yahoos saying that all of us need to be destroyed. See that? Once again, here we go. What did they do? Let's see what they did. Let's see if they got proud. Let's see if they uh, started a Black Panther Party or called themselves Muslims or what what did they do, I wonder. And that's what I that's that's why I'm making this video because this this story is a real good example of what to do when we're in trouble. Because this is another example of a, a type of uh Yaakov's trouble right here. Uh Esther chapter four. Starting in verse one. It said when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. He came before the king's gate. He had sackcloth on. He didn't have Jordan's on. Okay, he didn't have his uh, his pimp suit on. He wasn't walking around uh, with his fist balled up, throwing it in the air, talking about black power. He wasn't all proud, talking about, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do nothing to me. No, that's not what happened here. He was humbling himself. Every providence where the king commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning amongst the yahoos and fasting, see that? And weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes because fasting is a way to uh, help you humble yourself. That's what fasting does. So they weren't getting together to try to get a mob to go talking about, we finna revolt. Talking about, we finna leave. You know, we, we finna, we finna get, uh, get your guns. It's war. It's going to be a race war, black against white. That ain't what they was doing. It wasn't no Black Panther Party. They was humbling themselves. See? Now we're in the book of Esther, still in chapter 4, verse 16. Go gather together all the Yahoos that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Also, I, my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So there it is again, the fasting going on. That's what they did, fasted and prayed. They didn't get all proud and like, we, we ain't going to stand for this. We want, we want our reparations. No, they got humble. Yeah. So now we're in Proverbs. Just This is just a quick reminder right here. Proverbs chapter 6. And we'll go to, uh, we'll go to verse 17. Well, verse 16. These six things doeth Yah hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Look at that. First thing come up, a proud look. Had to have pride is the opposite of being humble. So you know somebody got a proud look? Most high don't like that. A lying tongue, hands to shed innocent blood, a heart that devise wicked imaginations, feet to be swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, he that soweth discord among his brethren. But look at that first one, a proud look. I'll be doggone. So that pride, the most I don't like that. We think it's good. To, yeah, you need to stand up, stand up. Yeah, black power. We would think that's good, but the most high don't like don't like it when you're proud. We're in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah. All right. Chapter 5. Okay. And we're going to go to uh, verse 23. 
It says, but this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and are gone. You see that? Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear Yah, our power, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these good things, these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. So, they even, even Jeremiah said, these people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They want to revolt. They want to uh, rebel. They want to uh, a revolution, you know, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah, say it again now. Nah. You know, they, <laughs> they they want to be proud, man. It, you know, but that that's that's not that's not cool with the Most High. The Most High, the, the Most High wants us to humble ourselves. And the story in the Book of Esther is a very good example of that. If something comes up like this. We have to humble ourselves because if we don't, the Most High gonna deal with us. And what did uh, what did it say in Zephaniah chapter three, starting at verse eleven? What did that say? This Zephaniah, it's not hey guys, it's Zephaniah. This is a way to this book. See Zephaniah, and you gotta go to the other the other side. It's the end of it, chapter three, verse eleven. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then will I take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. So even the women, it's going to be a lot of our women going to be taken out of the way. Because they're haughty. A lot of them have that haughtiness. That's what uh, Isaiah was talking about. Uh, uh, the the haughty uh, women of Zion, and and a lot of the men are going to be taken out of the way because they're proud. So you got the pride and the haughty that's going to be taken out of the way. That's what it says. I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. So we are going to see a lot of our own people taken away right out from the midst of us. Okay. And that 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 that's how the, the remnant is going to be uh, judged, even when we're in the wilderness. When we're in the wilderness, he's going to separate us again, and you're going to have those of us that are proud going to go right back into slavery because they're going to be left in the wilderness, and the other nations going to be able to do whatever they want to with them. But we're back in the book of Esther, Esther, chapter nine verses 2 through 5 because I want to show you that it, it does get better after we humble ourselves and the Most High redeems us the Most High gives us our power after we're humble this is what it says the Yahoos gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the providences of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt and no man could withstand them see there for the fear of them fell upon all people and all the rulers of the providence, and the lieutenants, the deputies, the officers, the kings, helped the Yahoos, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. See that? So, it says in verse 5, The Yahoos smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, and slaughter, and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. See that? But this came after, after we humbled ourselves, and the Most High made a way for us. Then the vengeance comes. But see, we don't want to humble ourselves. We want to go straight to the vengeance. We think we're going to get them back. Oh, no, you're going to do me? No, oh, no, I'm going to get you back. That's not how it works. See, we have to humble ourselves. And, yeah, but yeah, just like uh, in Esther chapter 4, I think it's starting at verse 5. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, that's not it. But yeah, I was, I was, I was talking about the, the uh, 400 years and how it, how it happens. At every fourth generation, something, something major happens with the Most High Chosen People, and, and that's what's happening again. So you, you're gonna, you're gonna see a, a lot of things happening from, 
from 2015 to 2019, you're going to see a lot of different things happening. Just like how uh, you see how they're treating our, uh, the, the, the Negro children in school. You see how they're treating the, 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 the black youth out on the streets. This is ne it's never been this bad. See, the last time it was this bad was when we were first brought over here. And then, of course, later on they gave us rights and different things like that. But then, now, see, now it's getting back worse again. It's getting back to where uh, they start killing us in the street and nobody does nothing about it. So, yeah, but this is uh, this is dealing with the time of An An uh, Ahasuerus. You can look that up. And then you got uh, from 167 B.C. to about... 236 AD which is exactly 430 years that's dealing with uh, Antiochus IV <clears throat> that's in uh, Ezekiel chapter 6 starting at verse 8 8 through 10 Ezekiel chapter 7 verses 21 through 27 and I think in Ezekiel chapter 5 verses 12 too but I'll probably put some more information in the comment section or in the uh, description of this video but yeah, we we should be str uh, striving to be humble, y'all. This is this is just it's just this is what has happened throughout Scripture. It's a pattern that you can see if you just look. We was always humble, and then we got our victory. Okay, so this elder young one coming at you out of the book of Esther. Like I said, it's a nice read because it gives a good example of what I was talking about in that first video I made about being humble. So yeah, humble is the way. That's that's how we're gonna get our breakthrough by being humble. Then the Most High is going to give us the upper hand. And when we see that, we're going to take advantage of it. So, this is Elder Young One. I hope y'all like this video. And I'm out. May y'all bless.